When hackers attack a system, it might seem like it's somewhat random what they do. But in reality it's not. By knowing what attackers might do next, the blue team can ensure that attackers are not able to take the next step and compromise your system. To help with this, many frameworks have been developed. One of the better known ones is the Cyber Kill Chain. In this video we will go over the Cyber Kill Chain. Look at its history, its phases, and how to defend against an attacker by using the kill chain against them. Developed by Lockheed Martin in 2011, the Cyber Kill Chain helps the blue team stop attacks by interrupting the phases of attacks. It can also assist attackers, allowing them to see what steps they might have to take next. The Cyber Kill Chain is built out of seven phases. These phases are Reconnaissance, Weaponization, Delivery, Exploitation, Installation, Command and Control, and Actions on the Objective. Let's look into detail what the phases of the Cybersecurity Kill Chain are. If you have any questions while we're going through the Kill Chain, please leave a comment. We will try to answer them to the best of our abilities. The first phase is Reconnaissance. In this step, research is done into the target. This means identifying potential targets by port scanning, using open source intelligence and social engineering. The goal of this step is to find as much information on the target. This includes vulnerabilities, corporate structure and people who are employed or other entities that are employed by the company. The reason attackers also go after the people and other entities is because this might give other information that can be used, such as passwords or other sensitive information. One might find out that an employee has issues with their employer or other private information that can be abused in a spear phishing attack. Once the first phase is complete, attackers move on to the next step, weaponization. In this phase, attackers look at all the information that was gathered in the reconnaissance phase. Attackers are searching in the information that was gathered for software used, vulnerabilities or misconfigurations. If any issues are found, then attackers can set up their own environment that is similar to the target environment. In the simulated environment, attackers can fine-tune their exploits for the target and prepare their pretext for social engineering attacks. This increases the chance that a foothold on the system is made in the next step. When the weaponization phase is completed, attackers need to get their exploits onto the target systems. This is the delivery phase. This is where the attacker tries to use the information that was collected to social engineer employees and install the exploit within the target environment or they use the vulnerabilities that were found in the environment. Alternative methods, like for example dropping USB sticks in the parking lot and rogue access points are also performed during this phase. Once the exploit is delivered onto the target, we enter the exploitation phase. In this phase, the weaponized payload that was made and sent to the target is hopefully executed on the target machine. The weaponized payload also performs any task to gain privileges. Once the payload is delivered, attackers move on to the next phase. The installation phase. Using the vulnerabilities that were found and the exploits that were prepared, Attackers should have got a foothold on the system now and use this foothold to install a backdoor to get permanent access to the system. This backdoor must also be prepared beforehand since it would be trivial for system administrators to detect off-the-shelf exploits such as Metasploit, PowerShell Empire or Cobalt Strike. In the command and control phase, attackers use the backdoor that was installed to get hands-on access to the system. This allows them to perform further steps such as pivoting around the network to find other systems that are vulnerable. The goal of this phase is not only to get further access to the environment, but also prepare for the next and final step of the chain. Actions on objective. When this phase is entered, the target environment is compromised and attackers can go after their objectives. This means exfiltration of sensitive data, but could also mean data destruction or ransomware deployment. If attackers are able to get to this position, then the network administrators usually would not be able to stop them from obtaining their target. 
now that we know how the cyber kill chain works, we can use this knowledge to prepare our defenses to disrupt the chain. By disrupting the chain, system administrators might be able to stop further attacks. Before we go through this though, please press the like button, this tells us you like this kind of content. The first question any administrator should ask themselves is, is there an intruder present in our system? This is the detect phase. Here we try to detect if there's somebody in our network. Network administrators monitor the devices in the network and the data is sent over the network for suspicious files, traffic or anything else that deviates from a standard baseline. For example, there's no reason why HR employees should use PowerShell. The next thing we want to do is prevent attackers from obtaining information about the system or employees. This means that where possible we want to hide, remove or obfuscate any information, JavaScript libraries, frameworks and other items that might disclose information to attackers. When it comes to employee information, this might be a lot harder since employees can do what they want on their own social media. We can however ask them not to include who they are working for in their profile. Sadly, there is a social media platform that is specifically made to share that information. It's a social engineer's best friend, LinkedIn. If an attacker is already present in the network, we want to disrupt them from doing any of the cyber kill chain steps. We can do this by blocking unneeded connections to and from our servers. We want to make it as hard as possible for attackers to move around the network. For example, if there's only a web server running on the server, we want to block all non-web traffic. This brings us to the next step, deceive. It's like the name implies, it's about tricking the attacker and making them think they are in a vital part of your network. We can use honeypots or honeynets for this. A honeypot is a machine that seems real but is actually a fake machine that is actively monitored by the security team. A honeynet are multiple honeypots set up in a network. The last step to countering is containing the threat. This can be done by segmenting the network, firewalling and if needed disconnecting the affected machines from the network. Since its inception in 2011, the cybersecurity landscape has changed a lot. This makes many cybersecurity professionals argue that the cyber kill chain is no longer applicable to the current state of cybersecurity. Because of this, other variants of the kill chain were made or complete new frameworks were introduced. One of the more well-known of the alternative attack frameworks is Mitra Attack. For attackers, it's good to know how the opposition thinks. This allows us to subvert their expectations and perform unexpected steps to evade their defenses. This concludes this quick look at the cyber kill chain. If you learned anything, please leave a comment about what you learned or would like to see next. Like the video and subscribe for more cybersecurity content. It would really help us in the algorithm and allows us to make more videos that you like. Thank you for watching and hack ethically.